there. Welcome to another episode of The Marathon. I am just going to sit here and chat with you today about something that's been on my mind and a video that I've wanted to film for a while. Uh, first of all, I'm super excited. Today, this video is going up on Thursday and the day after tomorrow, I'm gonna be in Alberta catching a flight tomorrow and heading to do um, a marathon or masterclass with a few of you, which I'm really excited about. So going to Calgary, which I'm gonna be packing and taking some merch and I've got some handouts ready to go. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you about anniversaries and milestones when it comes to grief. Today is May 23rd and it would have been my late husband Jeremy and my uh, 10th wedding anniversary. And it's just like, it's so interesting to think about. I posted a photo today of us on my social media and like, we look like such babies, like so fresh faced and so well rested. And it's just crazy to think of like what was about to happen and what we were about to like embark on for the next eight years for Jer and 10 years for me. Um, but you know, it's interesting when it comes to like grief milestones. So for example, like birthdays or anniversaries of someone passing or wedding anniversaries like Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, it's something that is super personal to everyone, but I just wanted to talk about how I have managed them for years and how I am kind of maybe thinking of switching it up a little bit. So let me explain. Um, not only did I lose Jeremy two years ago, but my dad died when I was 19. And so days for me that have been hard since then have been the anniversary of my dad's passing, his birthday and Father's Day. Then Father's Day got infinitely better once Thomas was born and Jeremy became a dad because that's what we would focus on and that's what we would celebrate. And then when Jeremy passed away, you know, this is like a really tough time of year. So May, well, the beginning of April um, sort of begins this like rough time of year of thinking about what happened like leading up to his passing. So like the end of April, we had gone to a two day marriage counseling workshop in Vancouver, which I, we talked about on my channel. Then, um, you know, there's Mother's Day, Thomas's birthday, our son, our wedding anniversary today. And then in a couple of weeks, it will be June 9th, which is the day Jeremy took his life. And this has been like last year and this year, you know, leading up to it, I was always thinking like, okay, like we're heading into that time, that really stressful time, that tough time. And like last year I did a bunch of therapy leading up to it and this year I booked another therapy um, about a week ago, two weeks ago now, and then I booked another one for two weeks from now as well. And you know, it was really interesting talking to my therapist about it. She just gently asked a question that I'd never really considered before. And she was like, do you have to make such a big deal out of these times? And I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, she's like, do you have to work yourself up to be like, I'm gonna be upset on Thomas's birthday. I'm gonna be upset on Mother's Day. I'm gonna be upset on our wedding anniversary and the anniversary of his passing and then his birthday later this year. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She's like, couldn't you not? And it was the first time, honestly, that I'd even considered not like building it up in my mind and working myself up about it. I was like, well, I guess, you know, and again, like whatever's good for you, but honestly, it took so much pressure off of me, you know, like today I've been fine. Um, and Thomas's birthday was fine. Interestingly enough, the day before Thomas's birthday, I cried most of the day, um, just, like wrought with emotions and grief. And um, like last year, leading up to the 9th of June, like leading up to the one year anniversary of Jeremy passing was so hard. And then the day itself wasn't. And I was like, okay, you know, we've made it through all the firsts. And it was just, it was really interesting to me, her saying like, do you have to? And initially I was like, well, isn't that kind of like disrespectful not to? And she's like, 
no like would he want you to be like lamenting and spending all of this time upset or would he want you to be planning something fun and celebratory you know like maybe going to a concert because that's something that we used to love to do or like on Thomas's birthday it's not about Jeremy it's about Thomas and Thomas turning eight and him having a great day so like we went on the steam train which I posted that video about and like his grandparents came to town and we had sushi and we had a really wonderful day and it wasn't like just sitting there being sad and I'm in no way saying that like you should forget the person who passed or you shouldn't honor their memory or you shouldn't like respect them and you shouldn't hold them deep in your heart of course not if you think that's what I'm saying you don't know me that's not at all what I mean I just mean like it was really interesting to me to just like sit and pause and be like oh I don't have to go into this basic like month of time thinking like this is gonna be terrible because another thing I've learned is like if you go into a situation thinking that it's gonna be terrible it's going to be terrible like you can manifest experiences and feelings like this is gonna be a really hard thing to do yeah you know or you can try and make it e easier or a little bit calmer and simpler and gentler and give yourself some more grace and um not saying that like this is an easy time of year or that being a widow for two years is easy at all or like you know that I, I'm ignorant in thinking that it's just gonna get easier and easier and we're gonna move on of course not I think of Jeremy every day almost every hour you know I see him in Thomas like Thomas's form as he's developing physically he looks more and more like Jeremy Thomas runs like Jeremy which is hilarious because Jeremy didn't really like bend his legs when he ran and now at school they're trying to get Thomas to bend his legs and I finally had to be like that's just how his dad ran like that's just how he is um so I just kind of wanted to tell you that just a different concept like still honor the people that you've lost but honor them in ways however you want to it doesn't have to be this like super upsetting time like you don't have to be bracing yourself like okay you know how on Gilmore Girls like Luke takes a dark day it's like okay that's fine but you you it's if you don't want to you don't have to but to me the only caveat is that you st still need to like hold them in your heart and like honor them and celebrate them and respect them but again like you do you as we always say here on the channel um whatever is going to be best for you however you best want to do it and honestly um I think I've been thinking more positively about Jeremy in the last couple of weeks because I haven't been <sighs> dwelling on his passing or dwelling on um that like anniversaries this time of year I've been really just kind of shifting my focus to good memories with him and um fun stuff or stuff that he liked or like songs that he liked of course as you saw in the Thomas birthday video I did pause and I was really missing him I think I'm always gonna miss Jeremy on Thomas's birthday because like he should be here seeing his son develop and grow and mature and age but I think there is something to be said that the person who's passed away I don't think would want you to be just miserable and upset all the time um, that being said guaranteed in the next few weeks I'll have some down days I've quietly booked off a little bit of time for myself um, and after this trip to Calgary I purposely am saying no to like social engagements and like gonna allow myself to sit with myself and journal and pause and just like be but it's it her saying that really just like flipped something in my mind like oh I don't have to be bracing myself for things to be horrific they're gonna be how I want them to be and how I make them to be and what I found, like I'm not saying I'm a grief expert because everyone's different and grief affects everyone very differently. That I have learned for sure. Even when you lose the same person, like I grieve differently than Thomas, than Jeremy's parents, than his brothers, than whomever. Um, but what I have found is that preparing for said anniversaries makes them much more manageable. Um, what I have found to be more difficult are the days that like, I don't see coming and they are 
much more upsetting. So like May 17th, which was the day before Thomas's birthday, and I was just like crying basically all day. I was like, this I didn't see coming. Or the, the first one that I remember catching me off guard was Jeremy passed away at the beginning of June and then at the end of that month Thomas like finished kindergarten and it was so hard like oh I didn't expect that at all so if you're struggling with you know you've lost your spouse or you've lost a child or a parent or a friend um and you struggle with those anniversaries or those like days where it feels a little bit heavier I thought I would just share that with you you know you could even plan something fun and well my th therapist said that to me I was like isn't that disrespectful like and I thought I think part of me thinks that I'm supposed to grieve Jeremy and like pause and be upset um so that that feels like respectful but I don't think that he would want that you know um it's a it's a tricky thing and it's something that no one prepares you for especially when you lose someone to suicide and it's something that everyone's different and you just kind of have to do what's best for you again you do you but um yeah it's something I'd never thought of like today I was more just thinking about our wedding day and thinking of the times of day and how fun it was and the friends who were there and the celebration we had and the laughs and the great times like I it's really interesting so um, that's all for today I just wanted to touch on grief and anniversaries and how yeah you don't necessarily have to just like prepare for the worst or um, set yourself up for days of being down or having those dark days again like Luke on Gilmore Girls you can celebrate and grieve and pass the time however feels best for you and if you do every year find yourself you know fading into darkness during say like Mother's Day or Father's Day or the anniversary of their passing or their birthday I just want to gently encourage you to think about it and think do I need to do this? Is this healthy? What purpose is this serving? Or how could I maybe do something nice? You know, like I know someone who lost her husband and every year she buys herself a gift from him. And I think that that's really fun. Yeah, so I just wanted to leave it there. That's it, that's all my thoughts. And again, you grieve how it feels best for you as long as you're being like healthy and taking care of yourself. I know it's like one day at a time. Sometimes it's 10 minutes at a time. And sometimes I still say that to myself, you can do anything for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks for watching. Lace up, subscribe, become a marathoner. Life's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And if you've lost someone and you're watching this video because of that, this is like a big internet hug, hugging the camera, getting real close in, in your space. Um, tomorrow's a new day and one last thing about it if you need to just stay off socials like if it's Mother's Day Father's Day Christmas if you're watching this around any of those kind of anniversaries and you're grieving get the hell off social media um, and tomorrow will come and it will just be another day so thanks for watching best to you I love you and um, I'll see you in the next one bye